I'm at Silverstone Auctions and I've come here to film a motorhome that they've got here. But actually, I had a look in here and whilst I don't want to rip off Harry's garage, so have a look at his channel if you want to see a really good thorough tour of this place, I can't not show you some of the stuff that's in here because it is just an Aladdin's cave. So I'm going to do a really quick dash round for Motorholic, but as I say, do check out Harry's garage if you want a more thorough tour. But these are my favourites. We're going to start right here with AM10 Red. This is an Aston Martin that was auctioned for charity on behalf of the Red Arrows. It's got lots of Red Arrow themes in it, like the graphics on the roof. And inside, you can see it's actually got, uh, where well, you can pick that up, but there's a door handle there, it says rescue. That's actually from a, uh, a Red Arrows jet. And there's a button inside as well on the dash. Again, I don't know how well you can see that from a Red Arrows jet. So lots of Red Arrows themes all the way through that one. Some very special wheels as well. This I love. This is like the one that was in the James Bond film, I think, Tomorrow Never Dies. And it is an absolute beautiful thing. It's a BMW Z8. Stunning, stunning car. Let's look at it right from the front. Look at that. That is a thing of beauty, isn't it? Let's go on a bit further because there's lots and lots to see here. Classic Mercedes. Lovely Corvette over here. We've got Minis down here. I think there's some people down there, so we'll dodge across this way. Check out this Aston Martin. I think that's a Vanquish, isn't it? It is a Vanquish, 2005. Lovely colour. And next to it, Jensen Interceptor. Beautiful. We don't see many of those these days, that's for sure. Lovely, lovely thing. We've got a Mercedes SL next to that. And an SLS, that's the gullwing one. Those are really rocketing up in value at the minute, and I can see why. Very beautiful car indeed. Let's look at that from the front. Stunning. Let's go a bit further. SEC 560. I've always wanted one of these ever since watching Miami Vice. The baddies always rolled around in these black ones. That, I think, is an SL. Yes, it is, 280 SL. We've got a, uh, a GT6 Mark II Triumph in the centre here. Back in the day, that was always the poor man's E-Type, but it's a very pretty car indeed. Beautiful thing in its own right. Very low, very small. E-Type over there, Bentley convertible. Jaguars along here. That's a Golf GTI convertible with a famous owner. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say who it is. More Rolls Royces, another SL. This is one of the very last VW Beetles ever built. The last ones are all done in silver with a blue interior, and this is one of them. Look at that. That's fantastic. Let's go a bit further. Porsches. Well, there's a Mustang on the end, first of all, but look at this, GT3 RS. And then we can go right down this line. We've got a turbo. Another turbo. This is a, I think this is the 911 SC, if I remember rightly. Let's have a look. That's a very original looking car. I love the wheels on that. Where are we? Carrera 3.2 Sport. Pretty, pretty car. And there's a 2.7 RS next to it. Those are iconic now. How lovely is that? And that one's a pretty rare colour, that's a Targa. Very nice. Ah! That's the SC. There we go, that's what I was thinking of. Lovely thing. When I was growing up, that was the dream machine. Absolutely. It's still a lovely, lovely piece of kit. Now we can see the seats inside here. That is very Porsche of its era, which is 70s. Another one next to it, in guards red. Lovely. Another one here. <laughs> you see what I mean about it being in Aladdin's cave, can't you? Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. Let's come right back here. This one, I'm not familiar with the really vintage Porsches. Porsche, I should say. Porsche is. I'm not quite sure how that works. Okay, a 356B T5 Coupe. Lovely. That's that Vanquish again. I do like that. That's a pretty, pretty car. Let's go a bit further. Another 911. 
Uh, now this I like very much. This is a 928 S4 Sport. Fell in love with these in Risky Business, of course, that classic 80s film. And this is pretty rare because it's a manual. And again, it's got that lovely Porsche interior of its era with these sort of pinstripe seats. Gorgeous, I love that. Absolutely love that. This is an SL65. Now what's rare about the SL65 AMG is that this was the V12. Not many of those got sold. And uh, I think I'm right in saying 600 horsepower, which is an incredible amount of power now, but even more so when this car came out, which was back in, I think it was 2008, let's have a look. 2006, there we go. Stunning colour. There's that 928 again. Let's go further on ramp. Look at this, look at this, an M1. Oh, and they're fantastic anyway, but this one with the wide arches and so on. That's a thing of joy, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. Oh. <laughs> Every time I take another few steps, I find another favourite car here. This one here, this is Maserati 350 GT Spider. Not seen one of those before. Look at that grille. Stunning, absolutely stunning. Let's walk around here. That is a pretty, pretty car. Classic Aston Martin next to it, I think a DB4. Let's see if I'm right. Let's come right around to the front and then work our way back. It is a DB4, there we go, DB4 Series 2 Coupe from 1960. That is the classic classic, isn't it? Let's a little look inside. I love these Super Legra badges on the bonnet. There we go. Good afternoon, Mr. Bond. Oh, stunning. I love the line of the car, the way it comes around here like this. Beautiful, beautiful. Let's get a bit further. So let's come down this side. Another 911. And now into Porsches. This is a, and this is a, don't tell me, it's a 328 GTB if I'm not very much mistaken, from the 80s. Friend of mine had one of these. Very first Ferrari I ever went in. Hello, John, if you're watching. Here's a trip down memory lane for you, my friend. Look at that. I think yours is the same as this, same interior, same color. Very nice, let's go right on around. Love the lights on this. Here we go, three to eight GTB. Stunning. That I think is probably about an 89, I'm gonna guess. We'll cheat again and look at the windscreen. Da, da, da. 89, spot on. That 550? V12, I think those are. Let's have a look. 550 Marinello, 1999. Doesn't tell us the, whether it's a V12, but I'm pretty sure they are. Look at the gear stick in here. This was classic Ferrari with the open gate. Don't know how you can see that. There we go. Stunning. Okay, a bit further, GT3, a Carrera, that's a modern Ferrari, I think that is a 458. They're still beautiful. They're more chiseled now, I think is the best way to describe them, than the early cars. Still a very, very pretty car. 458 GTB. These I love, this is very much the sort of the touring Ferrari. This is a 456, I think. Let's go on around. Yeah, 456 M GTA. Stunning, really lovely, lovely looking car. And next to it, you can't help but feast your eyes on this 308 GTS, left-hand drive. The classic Ferrari wheels. Look how high these tires are compared to a modern car. So the profile of those, <laughs> they're not low profile, they're high profile but uh, it suits the car perfectly, of course. That's very much of the era. And you can see how this one's much lower profile. This is a 355 GTB. 355 GTB, I'm saying that is. 
Now, my friend John, I mentioned earlier, he had one of these as well, and that was the first Ferrari I ever drove. He very kindly let me have a drive of that one, so that's very evocative. There you go, John. Remember that? It's exactly the same as his. Same steering wheel, same open gate gearbox, same colour carpet, same everything. But it is a classic colour combination, of course, so there's a few of those around like that. Pretty, pretty car. Let's go a bit further. We've got a Brabus Smart over here. About the butchest smart you'll ever see. A lovely original Porsche 911 Targa. I'm guessing 70s? No, 80s. I'm going 80s. I'm going early 80s. Let's see if I'm right. 89, late 80s. Okay, I got that one a bit wrong, especially when I said 70s, but what a beautiful car. And again, it's got those classic Porsche wheels on it. Boxster Spider over here. That looks pretty cool. And we looked at these Porsches on this row a second ago, I think. So we'll carry on down this side. Aston Martin Vantage, I reckon. Yeah, V8 Vantage. There's these Mustangs. That's a little bit Eleanor, that one on the left, isn't it? Look at that. Joyous, absolutely joyous. Let's see if we can see inside. Is the window down? No, it's not. We can have a little sneaky look like this, though. Lovely, lovely. Oh, yes, let's go a bit further. <laughs> We've got a Mini. These Minis are so small when you see them now. Now we're used to the sort of the current size of Mini. That is absolutely pint size. Beautiful two-door Bentley. That's the original Continental, I think. I'm guessing 90s for that one. Lovely, elegant car. Look at the lines of this around here. Stunning. And proper traditional Bentley on the inside as well. Let's have a look. Continental. 1995 Continental S. Fabulous. This is a Fisker electric car. We've got another Bentley over here. You don't get these on Bentleys anymore, these flying wings on the front. That, <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Let's go and have a look. It's very pretty, it's a Maserati. Stunning. 1972 Maserati Mexico. Not come across one of those before. Pretty, pretty car. That's lovely. There's a Jaguar E-Type next to it. Hello, John again. <laughs> yes, he's had one of those too. And, and a Berth 595. Sweet little thing. And look at this, a really original VW Golf from Mark I. My mother had one of these. This is a diesel one. In fact, I think this was the first diesel hatchback that ever came out. And I remember at the time when people bought them because diesel was so, so rare in a small car. People used to pull up at uh, diesel pumps, at petrol stations, at fuel stations, I should say, and they'd get shouted at down the tunnel, you're putting diesel in your car! And of course they were meaning to. Let's look inside here. Oh, that's a little trip down memory lane, that is. Fantastic. Bright yellow Porsche RS. Stunning. And another 928. Do love these 928s. I would have one of those if I had the money in the space, without a doubt. Continental GT Bentley, I'd have one of those too. And look over here. Ferrari Testarossa. I mean, just the king of supercars back in the 80s. Stunning, absolutely beautiful. Look at the mirrors out on stalks. What year is this one? 1990, actually, that must be one of the last ones. Again, it's got that wonderful open gate for the gear shift. And those haunches. Oh, it's so sexy. Beautiful, beautiful thing. And from the Sublime to Ridiculous, that is a Citroen Dayan. Dayan? Diane, I believe. I'm going to check. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's brilliant. No, I'm wrong. It's a Citroen AV6. There you go. I don't know everything. I don't really know anything, do I? Cute though, isn't it? What else have we have? An SL500, someone's got good tasting cars. 
and there's a Ferrari next to that. That's another 550 Marinello, I think, with a manual transmission. Nice. Yes, it is. Okay, let's go on a bit further. Now these I love. This is kind of the forgotten Ferrari. This kind of went out of favour a bit, and I think they're back in now. I think people have realised just what a classic that is. Now this was very much the touring Ferrari back in the 80s. So if you didn't want your mid-engined roadster, you wanted something to really cover ground on, this was the car to do it. Beautiful, beautiful thing. What's this, 1987, yeah. I really like these, I always like these. And I was a bit sort of, you know, swimming against the tide for wanting one of those. But nonetheless, as I say, they're coming to their four now because they're quite a rare car. Ford Escorts. Who didn't have a Ford Escort when they were my sort of age, but when they were growing up? I had two Ford, yes, two Ford Escorts. Two Ford Escorts and two Ford Capris. So these are a 1600 GT, very original looking car. Oh, look at that. Oh, beautiful. That brings back some memories. Mine wasn't a 1600 GT, sadly. Mine was a 1300 popular, I think. Uh, what we've got here, we've got a Ford Escort Mexico. Now, this was always the one to have. We always dreamt about having an Escort Mexico. And there is one. That's quite a subtle one. Most of them had the thick stripes down the side. I remember a friend of mine had a Mexico. I was very, very jealous. Yeah, look at that. Stunning. And an Escort Cosworth, obviously a lot newer. And this one, this is a Lotus twin cam. So, okay, there was a period when they put Lotus engines in these. And, uh, and that's quite a sleeper, isn't it? I mean, you look at that, you wouldn't really take too much notice of it until you get up close and you spot the little twin cam badge on the side. This lets you know it's a Lotus twin cam. Look at that. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Let's say I came here to film motorhomes, but I've just been blown away by the stuff they've got here. Here's a Club Sport 968. These are a great, great car in their day, and they still are. And there's a little Lotus Elan next to it. Elan Sprint. Stunning, stunning. Oh, Ford Capri! Ford Capri! Forget the Porsche, we're looking at the Ford. Oh, this one, I think, is an RS. I think it's an RS 2.7, it might be a 3.1. We will find out. RS 2.6. <laughs> I'm wrong, completely wrong. That's lovely. That was the dream machine when I was growing up. I had a Mark 1 Capri, but it was a 1600 XL, not an RS 2600. Look at the seats in this. So they built this really for racing, but of course they had to sell them for the road as well, and this is one of them. Stunning. I love the little whale tail spoiler on the back. That's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. What else have we got here on the Ford line? That is a, looks like a Focus Rally car. That's another Cosworth Escort here. These are worth a load of money now. These are great car, four wheel drive. And there's a, uh, an RS Focus over here and an RS Cosworth. This was the People's Supercar back in the day. When this came out, this again was in the 80s, and I think this was sort of 0 to 60 in five and a half seconds or something, which back then was Ferrari quick in a four-seater Ford Sierra. And they're worth mega, mega money now. Look at these beautiful Recaro seats in it. Lovely. It's one of the first cars to have the dash that sort of angled around you. And this is what they were famous for, the big buy spoiler on the back. Wonderful, wonderful. I think we'll go down this row now. We've got uh, M3s, it's a racing M3. And another one, and look at this, three litre CSL with a proper motorsport stripes on it. That, that there is gorgeous, absolutely beautiful. There's a uh, Mitsubishi Evo. This is rare, this is a Renault, I think they called these a Renault Spider. I do remember that for some reason it's the only car I've ever known about, it didn't have a heater in it. It's almost like a sort of two-wheeled motorbike. Let's have a look. Sport Spider, yeah, there we go. Right-hand drive, that's very rare. Look how minimalist that is in there. Fantastic. What else have we got? We've got another Cosworth Escort over here. And these are Renaults down the back, not this one, obviously, that's a Triumph. 
a couple of Lancias over there. This is a road going Renault 5 Turbo. Now the neat thing about these was, believe it or not, they're mid-engined. So they built this so that they could build the rally car on it. Again, they had to make some road versions to make it legal for the rallying. You can see the air vents at the back there. And if you look at the back, you'll see there's no back seats. There's just a shelf because the engine is underneath that. It's a mid-engined car. And that then allowed them to make rally cars like this one. Exactly the same. And another one here and another one here and they were up against things like the metro 6r4 of which there's one here now this i very much remember from back in the day watching the the rally races this was in the rac rally and apparently this came off the end of the rally it won i think i'm right in saying and then they just said okay that's it and they kept that car exactly the same so all the battle scars that it got in the rally are still there. <laughs> there we go, 1986 MG Metro 6R4 X Works. Fantastic. And this on the end, oh, this is um, a Rover Metro. Yeah, so Metro 6R4, but that was when they stopped calling them Austins and started calling them Rovers, hoping that they would uh, get a bit of Rover cachet out of the badge. What else have we got over here? This, I don't even know what this is. Looks cool. That's an Alfa Romeo. Here we go. Alfa Romeo 1900 Special. Oh yes, what a pretty, pretty car. What year is that? Let's have a look. That is a 1953. Stunning. Now the Mini uh, Ferrari 360. Ah, this is one with the stripes, so that's a Stradlardi, I think I'm right in saying. I'm going to get some of these right, aren't I? Here we go. 360 Challenge Stradlardi. So that one's Stradlardi. Try again. Stradale. I don't know how to pronounce that. I probably should. But that was a lightweight, high-performance one. Very, very lovely. That TVR. Must be, mustn't it? Yeah, TVR. <laughs> Wonderful purple colour. Another gorgeous Carrera 911. Oh, and another Capri! And look at the wheels on this. This is the original RS wheels that they had back in the day. These were lovely. I wanted these wheels for my car. I couldn't afford them. But they had those wheels on the road cars as well. Yes. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Love that. That's the Mark III. The one we looked at earlier was a Mark I, which is the first version that came out, obviously, being a Mark I. This was a Mark III, so this was the last shape. So very similar shape but it was all modernized so the, the grille is different well the whole car really is different but it maintains the original shape of when they first came out lovely lovely thing what else have we got we've got a rally art a mitsubishi over here fiat dino this is a pretty pretty car very nice and this apparently was an actual land rover from the film spectre the james bond film it was one of the ones that's actually in the film so that is very very cool very cool indeed That's one for you there, Ben, if you're watching. I have a friend, Ben, who's absolutely mad on these things and, uh, and rebuilds them. Let's have a look. Yeah, here we go. Awesome. What else? Oh, an original Range Rover. Look at this. So this was really the birth of the SUV. This is the first vehicle where they combined an off-road vehicle with a luxury vehicle, such as luxury was back in the 70s, because it's pretty basic by today's standards, and this one's pretty original by the look of it. Let's go on a bit further. This is an original Land Rover. Uh, it's a 1958 Series 1. So this is how Land Rover kind of started off, really. That's the right colour for that, isn't it? And then there's a, uh, a Range Rover. That's a sort of slightly later series. And another Land Rover there. There's that Testarossa again. Look at the arse on that. Oh, oh, oh. Let's get a bit further. Okay, let's come around here. We've got BMWs. That's, I'm guessing, a 1602. That's the Airstream. That's what we've come to film. So you should see a video of that one fairly soon. That was what actually got me in touch with these guys because I really, really wanted to film that for the channel. We'll come back to that. We're going to do an individual video on that one. This is a 2002 TII, in fact. So that's quite a sporty one. One of the first sports saloons from the 70s, I think. 74, yeah. BMW M3, this was when 
the M series really took a hold. These are fantastic cars. And the interior on these, I love the dashboard, such clear dials on these. I don't think they've ever topped the dashboards on these. So look in the one next door. No, we won't, we'll go on this side. No, we won't, the window's closed. <laughs> here we go, there's one over here with the window open. There we go, super, super clear dashboard on these. I really like that and the way that it wraps around you again. Very nice. And these M3s, these are the ones to have. These are basically developed to be like a race car, but again, they had to build road versions. And that kicked off the M series cars in a big way. I think there's an M5 before, which was based on the 5 series saloon, but this is when it got really serious. The Tommaso Pantera, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And let's go back down here. I think there's one row we haven't done. So we'll come right back. Oh, look at this mini, <laughs> the old Wabasto sliding roof. Oh, look at this. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. There's Mustangs, we saw those Mustangs. The only row we haven't seen, I think is right down here because somebody was filming earlier. Classic SL, lovely. Rolls Royces, and I think if we go back down here, what haven't we seen? Ford Falcon. They used to race these, believe it or not. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? And then over here, this is a Alfa Romeo. I don't know what it is, not big on Alfa Romeos. It's an Alfa Romeo 2000 Spider by Touring. That's a very, very elegant motor car indeed. Let's look at the interior of that. It's in very good condition as well. Look at that, it looks like new. Beautiful. Okay, so that's that. Let's go a bit further. We've got one of the original 190 SLs. Imagine having that in the south of France. Oh, stunning. Absolutely stunning. And then this is a slightly later edition SL. We call these the Pagoda SLs. Oh, it's very much of its era, isn't it? Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And then, in fact, this is like a potted history of SLs because I think that was pretty much the original. That was the next one. That came out... 60s I think 60s and then in the 70s we were up to this and then they went on from there this is always known as the Dallas SL Bobby Ewing in Dallas always used to roll around in one of these I love the open gearbox I wish they still did these where you can actually see where it slots through the track to go in and out of the gear selections and very period seats on that and then we're back pretty much to where we started there's that uh, 560 SEC again and the Gullwing SL and so on. Can I pick a favourite? Well, <laughs> yes I can, but it changes every 30 seconds, so I won't bother you with it. But that's about it. I said I wasn't going to do it because Harry does it so very, very well, and I do suggest go and look at Harry's video, but I couldn't not show you this stuff. It's just off the scale. So if you want to buy any of these, find Silverstone Auctions and get bidding. <laughs> Let me know if you buy one. Take care. Bye-bye.